Good morning and welcome back to another video. Well, I'm gonna try and take you guys along for another day at the urgent care. I am actually here very early today. It is 8 a.m. Well, it's like seven minutes before 8 a.m., which is definitely early. Our urgent care actually doesn't technically open up until nine, but since I'm here, if anyone walks in, I will see them. Otherwise, I'll be doing like callbacks and just checking on labs and stuff like that. But I wanted to, before I go into work and before I show you like my normal urgent care stuff, I posted a video yesterday um, talking about how I got a negative review. And yeah, I mean, I obviously was, I still am upset about it. I guess, you know, I'm just gonna let it slide. <laughs> but I wanted to point out that uh, you guys have been so nice and supportive. So thank you so much. I've already had like so many people either private message me or write on YouTube that they've either experienced this themselves or even if they haven't, you know, just giving me words of encouragement, uplifting words. Uh, so you guys, seriously, thank you so much. You guys are always uplifting and positive and in a world that is not that way often. That has not been my experience uh, on this platform at all. You guys have been nothing but uplifting and I feel that I'm just thankful. I don't know. That's just all I wanted to say. And you guys are also amazing. And I hope that you know that as well. Because for you to outpour kindness to me, someone that you don't even know, for someone that you don't know personally, that's what I was saying. Well, for you just to take time to just say anything nice and uplifting, you know, it's just really kind. And I really appreciate it. And you guys are awesome. You're compassionate and empathetic. And that is a big component of being a good healthcare provider in this world for sure. So thank you for being uplifting to me. I'll keep you guys posted if anything happens with the Google review. I'm gonna try and not let it affect me and my practices. I'm still gonna try and just follow evidence-based medicine regardless, you know, regardless of that review and everything like that. Although it does weigh heavy on me that I don't want more of them. <laughs> but I'm gonna focus on the positive and I just wanted to hop on here and say thank you guys so much for being so supportive as always and wouldn't expect anything else you guys are always been amazing but I'm gonna go into work now we have another provider coming on at one and it's funny you guys I haven't I don't know if I've actually said this on here yet but she was part of the new NP group before she started working here she had no idea that I worked here and it was just kind of like this funny like meeting we had when she recognized who I was and I realized who she was and it was just so funny and she's so great so she's our new uh, nurse practitioner so kind so maybe I'll have her hop on this video and just say hi to you guys put her on the spot I'm sure she she would be down though she's so great all right guys I'll talk to you soon gotta get the coffee fully equipped with caffeine that I don't think does the job anymore I'm gonna keep sipping this baby down in hopes that miracles happen is here with right hand pain, erythema, and swelling at the base of the right thumb palmar aspects. So it's Friday. Patient states he got a wood splinter in his hand on Friday. Please, he successfully removed the splinter. However, has noticed over the last two days increasing redness, warmth, and swelling to the site has been applying antibiotic cream at home to nice fever, body aches, numbness and tingling, any additional injuries or complaints.
So that patient was diagnosed with cellulitis. I prescribed Keflex and then made sure to, of course, update the tetanus. Patient is a 59-year-old male with a history of hypertension, here today for left calf erythema, swelling and pain for six days. He states he noticed the mild erythema to the left calf initially after being out gardening all day and assumed it was, quote, some sort of rash. Patient denies itching and states over the next few days the swelling increased and states his calf feels tight and warm to the touch. He denies a history of clots, recent surgery, travel or mobilization, history of smoking or coronary artery disease or peripheral vascular disease. Patient also denies all other symptoms including chest pain, shortness of breath, fever, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, weakness, numbness and tingling, and body aches. He has been attempting ice and elevation at home without relief or improvement of his symptoms. All right, so as you can see, I'm actually not in the office right now. I just want to kind of elaborate on this patient a little bit and go into exactly how this encounter went. So this patient, like I said, his symptoms he noticed after he was gardening outside all day. And he was really convinced that this was some sort of rash that turned into like a skin infection, like a cellulitis. And to be honest, I mean, they obviously present pretty similarly. I mean, redness, warmth, swelling, tenderness, pain. He didn't have any systemic signs of infection. And so that, you know, was a warning sign that maybe this was not a cellulitis. But cellulitis doesn't always present with, you know, anything systemic like fever or body aches, anything like that. He didn't have any of those. His vitals were actually perfectly stable. He didn't have tachycardia or a hypoxia or a tachypnea, nothing. And so that also made me less suspicious for a DVT. So I was kind of on the fence with this one between whether or not this was a cellulitis or in fact a DVT. And he really was very apprehensive about even being further evaluated for a DVT. And now knowing what I know, I'm really happy that I did push for him to get an ultrasound of that calf. Because um, as you'll see here in a minute, the report showed that he did and in did indeed have a DVT. But what happened was this office that I work at, like I said, we have lots of resources available to us, which is really nice. And fortunately for us, when he came in for his visit, it was during office hours when we have someone on staff in the building who does do stat ultrasounds. The report did come back that he, in fact, did have a DVT. So obviously that's a very different treatment plan. Uh, you know, cellulitis, like we saw in that original, the first patient, of course we treat with an antibiotic, but in this case, this is anticoagulant. And this patient needed to be treated with a blood thinner and then have a very close follow-up. And so he was fortunately able to be treated outpatient and I'll kind of go into that a little bit more. And I started him on a 21 day pack of Xeralto and then had him have a close follow-up with a primary care actually in our office the next day. And so I've had this happen a few other times where I've diagnosed DVT in the office and I just make sure that they have a good primary care that they are established with and that I really emphasize that they need to have a very close follow-up while they start this blood thinner that I prescribe them. And so I'm glad that I pushed for it. I'm glad that he got the ultrasound. I'm glad that we were able to correctly diagnose him and we were to treat him and follow him up the next day and he is A-OK. -okay. So as you can see here, a Doppler ultrasound was done of the left lower leg and the impression read that a DVT extending from the popliteal vein through the posterior tibial vein and perineal vein was identified. So not all patients who are diagnosed with a DVT need to be hospitalized. In fact, many are able to be safely managed outpatient. Outpatient therapy may be appropriate for patients who are hemodynamically stable, low risk of bleeding, without renal insufficiency, and an adequate home life with the ability to not only take their medic medications correctly, but also to monitor their symptoms safely. So factors that indicate outpatient therapy is not appropriate include patients with a massive DVT, for example, an iliofemoral DVT or, and I was not familiar with this until I looked it up, but a phlegmasia cerulean dolens. So this is a severe form of a DVT and it most often occurs in the upper leg 
and it is generally accompanied with rapid swelling, severe pain, and bluing of the skin that can eventually have critical limb ischemia and even potentially limb loss so obviously these present very critically also those patients with a concurrent pulmonary embolism patients who have a high risk of bleeding and are already on blood thinners and also those with other severe comorbidities these patients should be hospitalized for their dvt therapy and of course for close observation so options for treatment, they, there are a couple options. So there's the subcutaneous heparin or Lovenox, but there's also the blood thinners, the Xarelto or Eliquis. So like I said, for this patient that I treated here today, I prescribed him Xarelto. And so if you actually go onto the Hippocrates app um, for Xarelto dosing, there is a section right there for the treatment of DVT that's really very easy to follow when prescribing this medication. But Generally, this starts with a 15 milligram PO twice a day uh, for 21 days, and then it transitions to 20 milligrams PO every day. So in this circumstance, I prescribed the patient the 15 milligrams by mouth BID for the 21 days. I gave him those tabs to really emphasize that he needs to follow up with his primary care for that additional when they change it to the 20 milligrams every day. Of course, this is going to be different if you're in primary care because you'll be following these patients, but from the urgent care standpoint, obviously I'm just bridging them till they get their continuity of care through their primary care. Hi guys, <laughs> I have laryngitis. Oh yeah, we, we're kind of rough <laughs> over here in general. But so Abby, I was telling them that I know you. I'm the number one fan. Uh, I, uh, it's a very funny story how uh, I met Brittany. I actually uh, met her YouTube self before, <laughs> but um, I'm so happy. I was so like, it was crazy how I I looked I looked at the schedule. I just got this job, you know, like three months ago, and I went on the schedule. And I'm like Brittany Holzbeck. I'm like, that's the girl I watch like, and I've been watching for like months on YouTube and following her journey. I'm like, she's on the roster, the provider <laughs> list. And I'm like, is this a joke? And like, after I found out it was really her and like, I, you know, I did some like investigating and like creeped in and stuff like that. <laughs> I found out it was you. Yeah, then I printed out like everything she had recommended and I come to work one day and I couldn't wait to meet her. I gave her the biggest hug. I said, oh my God, you look <laughs> And now I work with her. It's very sweet. I wish I had my voice. That it's day. such a sweet, like, meet cute. I think. And look at, look what book she's got. What book you got, girl? Yeah, these are the books she recommended right here. <laughs> um, you know, I got all my stuff here. Yep. And, and then, yep, and we then always use our Emra. This is, like, x-rays. because. Oh, I'm, yeah, that's a good one. Because people always ask about, like, ortho stuff. Mm -hmm. um, this is a really good, so the ortho yeah. has, like, a little handbook, too. That's a good one to get if... But only like fractures and treatments, not mm -hmm. like sprains and stuff like right. that. Right, but the mo like more common though, right? Yeah. Like the most common stuff. Oh, and so then the stuff that I printed out was in Oh my here. god, you're so funny. So like, you know, all the stuff you have. Um, oh my gosh, I, how funny. Yeah. All right, thank you for being on my video, Abby. I'm so glad. So everyone, this is Abby. She's the new NP here and we love her. All right, so. guys. Well, I also uh, forgot to film an outro for this video. So this is going to be it right now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit. I'm excited that you guys got to meet Abby. I think that's super cool. I'm glad she got to be on the video. So definitely make sure to say hi to her in the comments. Also, don't forget to, of course, like the video, subscribe to the channel. It helps me to continue to make more videos just like this one. And until next time, I wish you guys nothing but the very best. Don't forget to learn something new every day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.